Welcome to Kyle Anthony's UFC Betting Show. I am Kyle Anthony and welcome to the podcast. Welcome to the betting show for UFC 280, Islam Makashev versus Charles Oliveira. We're going to be breaking down two plays like we always do here. We're going to be jumping right into it. I am excited to break this one down. A massive card overall. We've got some great cards coming up to finish off the year of uh, 2022. So I'm excited about it. If you want to become a client, link down in the description. I've got a 5% max play that I have for this uh, this card here over the last 18 months. 63% winner on my max play. So always finding a good spot there on my max plays. But uh, what a cool client again, link in the description. I appreciate everybody liking, following, commenting, all of those things helps the channel grow and uh, I appreciate that. So in return, let's get you some winners. So let's talk about the main event of the evening between Islam Makashev and Charles Oliveira. Now we've got now Islam, he is a roughly around a minus 185. And in the comeback, we've got Charles Oliveira, he's roughly around plus 160, plus 155. Kind of in that range right now is where it is sitting. So like we always do here, we're going to break down three fights for each fighter, see what we see, see if one fighter can expose the other fighter, and if the line makes sense to place a wager. So the first person we'll be talking about here is the champ. Yes, he's the champ. Charles Oliveira, uh, three fights ago, he fought Michael Chandler. Now, this really kind of was the beginning, in my opinion, of just next level for everything for Charles. I mean, maybe a fight or two prior to that, but he really is showing how he's putting it all together. The striking has started to really evolve and blend in with that elite high-level submission game and grappling game. So in this fight here against uh, Michael Chandler, um, right away what I thought was interesting is he was firing big leg kicks. And that is something that right away was a great game plan, trying to really take away some of that power that uh, Chandler has, dropped him uh, when he slapped that the first time, uh, kicked the leg. And then he ended up kind of chopping away at it early and kind of you know pushing forward and doing that. But the one thing that you did see also is big exchanges. I mean, this was one of those fights where it was right out the gate and pretty much we're going to talk about the next three that are the, the the three fights we're talking about for for uh charles is all of them were wars i mean he had wars these were not little pitter patter you know positional kind of fighting these were wars <coughs> excuse me so right away they're, they're both firing shots landing shots big shots both you know Oliveira was landing some big shots chandler landed a big shot um, and one of them was there is exchange where, you know, Charles got the takedown. Charles got rocked, kind of went in for the takedown, got the takedown, and so quickly, as we always continually see, gets to the back quickly, gets to um, Chandler's back. It looked like this has kind of been the beginning of the end for a lot of fighters. Chandler, uh, you know, when it comes to his grappling, when it comes to his wrestling, very strong guy when he's in, uh, in those, obviously, those grappling situations ends up getting out of it, which I thought was extremely impressive. He gets out of it, but not only did he get out of it, he started firing his own big shots, landed on Oliveira. Oliveira looked rocked, ended up kind of going to the ground, kind of an oddly kind of going to the ground. Um, Chandler laying it on him. And I think, honestly, that ending sequence really gave Chandler just so much confidence going into that second round. I mean, I think he really was feeling himself going into that second round, and I think he kind of maybe took for granted the shots that Oliveira does have. Going into the second round right away, it was, honestly, this check left hook that Oliveira threw that dropped and pretty much finished Charles Oliveira, I'm sorry, that rocked, dropped, and, uh, and finished uh, Michael Chandler, I thought was impressive. I mean, it is such an underrated check left hook. It's incredible the way that he kind of baited Chandler to kind of throw, he backed up, threw the check left hook, dropped him, got on top of him, and finished him. And there even showing, he finished Chandler with strikes. He didn't go out there and just submit him or take him down and ground and pound him. He went out there, stood with him, knocked him down, finished him, ended up getting the TKO in round two against a very tough uh, Michael Chandler. Then two fights go, he fought Dustin Poirier. Now this was kind of the same thing. Hey, another big striker who has power, there's no doubt uh, Poirier has power, top-level boxing. And in that first round, it was, again, big, big pace, big exchanges, both of them firing, both of them throwing. You know, Poirier landing, but it did show. Yes, he hit uh, Oliveira a couple times with some big shots, but it did show he's not giving up. That was a big thing on, on, on Oliveira, was really, you know, in the past, hey, can he really be in the brawl? Can he really stand? Can he really just take those shots? Does he give up? Does he not, you know, does he all of a sudden shell up? These are, again, 
big opportunities here for his opponent. He ends up kind of getting through it and pushing through it. Um, but he did rock Charles again in another positional fight here. Uh, a standing fight here did rock Charles. Um, but going into that second round, I really liked the adjustments that Oliveira made. I mean, he started really utilizing the knee in the clinch. He started utilizing more, um, uh, uh, more body shots. Really just took the wind out of Poirier, and then he ended up taking him down, ground and pounding him for basically the entire round of that second round. And that's kind of where everything changed. He couldn't get up. You know, Poirier stuck on the bottom. He was taking big shots. Going into that second round, it pretty much seemed um, uh, that Poirier was exhausted. He was tired. He was beat up. And quickly in that third round, Oliveira gets his back, goes in there, gets the standing rear naked choke, finish him pretty quickly in that second round, goes out there and gets a victory. But again, another war early in the first two rounds, and he ends up pushing through and getting that, uh, getting that submission finish. And then most recently, he fought Justin Gaethje. Here's another situation where this is a brawl. I mean, this was another fight here where right out the gate, both of them firing. And the one thing I think that a lot of people miss in this fight is the first exchange, he rocked Gaethje. I mean, Gaethje was rocked going into that uh, going into that opening round, the opening sequence. He rocked him. I mean, you saw he was like, boom. And both of them ended up getting hit, you know, with some pretty good shots, big exchanges uh, from both. But, you know, um, uh, you know, after all the big exchanges start happening, I think you see once again that he's got power. I mean, Alvera has power. If he's able to rock uh, Gaethje in, in multiple spots in, in the first round, ended up, you know, kind of working him, that's going to say a lot about a guy who's been very durable, who's been able to show the chin has been his thing, multiple other power punchers have not been able to knock him out or even finish him or rock him. Maybe, maybe rock him. I mean, of course, that's going to be part of a... Um, a brawl, but uh, it's impressive for a guy who's really a, a submission specialist going out there and dropping Gaethje, hurting Gaethje, getting to his back, getting the finish in the first round, but a really impressive performance for how quickly this fight was. It was another war, but Oliveira goes up there and gets the victory. Now on the other side, you've got Isla Makashev. Three fights ago, he fought Thiago, uh, Thiago Moises. Now, this one I thought was actually extremely interesting when you're going back and taking a look at this fight. Now, it's two guys, two guys who are going to be looking to grapple, two guys who have high-level grappling, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu backgrounds, and all these great things when it goes into grappling. And I, I would have to say that Moises impressed me in this spot. I mean, you know, Islam had some opportunities. He kind of was a little bit more timid going for these takedowns, going for these um, uh, um, opportunities to kind of take the top control. That's what he's going to be facing on Saturday night. So when you've got a guy that is a wrestler, it, it may be a little more timid for him being on top. And you, you kind of saw that early in the fight where he just kind of didn't want to get into those grappling positions, didn't look for really the takedowns. And then you saw Moises who went out there and got a takedown on Islam. He went up going in there, pushing for the takedown, got, you know, although Islam got up, but he got the takedowns in certain spots. And I think it was the second or third round had um, Islam up against the fence for a little bit, controlling his his, uh, his posture there, controlling his body movement there. And yes, again, Islam was doing some good things because then he ended up kind of finding opportunity to get top position, working him from top position, landing big shots from top position, and then also ended up pushing for you know control in that, uh, uh, I think it was the fourth round where he got the finish. In that fourth round, Islam really poured it on. And that's kind of the way Islam's been. He's very, you know, he can be timid, early on or he could really wait and and really have a plan and maybe there it was hey i'm, I'm gonna kind of wait a little bit for for thiago and then i'm gonna look for these takedowns but he ends up getting a victory but i thought it was interesting to see thiago moises who i don't really put as this top level guy another guy who's pretty young i think he's 26 27 um go out there and look pretty well in certain spots even though he's finished i thought it was interesting he looked well in certain spots but ism goes out there and does get the submission uh submission finish in the fourth round now, these next two are pretty quickly here. You've got Dan, uh, Dan Hooker here. Uh, Dan Hooker, this was a quick fight. I mean, this was one where Islam had no issue with pushing forward because there is no takedowns. Um, he, you know, there is no uh, worry that Islam's going to be taken down or, or, or the grappling ability of Dan Hooker. He kind of more was a little bit leery of the, of the striking of Hooker. He does have great striking. He's got good knees, good elbows in the clinch. He's a long-rangey guy. And this was quick. He kind of is a went there, got the takedown, got top control, ended up working to the submission in the first round. Kind of an easy showing there. I think it was 
in the first minute or two <laughs> of the first round. But Ism goes up there and dominates and gets the victory. Uh, then most recently, he fought Bobby Green. I believe this was another short notice fight here for him here. And this is one here again where there is no threat for Islam and his game plan. Where his game plan is, again, yeah, getting those takedowns. And Bobby just, he's got elite striking, he's got quick hands, he's got great footwork. I mean, there's a lot of good things that Bobby Green does do, but he pushed forward right away. He got uh, Green up against the fence, ended up throwing him down to the ground, getting full mount very quickly. There, Bobby had to kind of slide and, and trying to get out, gave up his back, ground and pound, fight over in the first round. So there you have it there. Now, with that being said here, I think the first thing that you look at here is that this is going to be an absolute chess match. I mean, when it comes to grappling, it is going to be an absolute chess match when you're looking at it. Now you've got kind of when you're piecing it together and when I'm capping it or looking at it overall, um, you know, obviously the first part here is Islam, he wants the four pressure. He's going to have the four pressure. He's going to look to have those relentless chaining together takedowns uh, and really keep that heavy top pressure. Once he's got the top pressure, keep it, work on his opponent, seek for the finish, you know, kind of melts his opponent once he's on top of him, kind of doing the ground and pound, laying the big shots. And the other side, you've got Charles Lambert, who is lethal off of his back and, you know, has the most submission finishes in UFC history. So this is a guy that's going to be very comfortable anywhere this fight goes. And that, to me, I think is a massive part of kind of how this fight will go. Because if you've got somebody like uh, Islam, who was a little iffy on takedowns on Thiago Moises, I mean, what... What does that do for your mental state or what you're going against when you're facing somebody like Charles Oliveira who can pretty much finish you off of his back, side control, I mean, standing, we've seen it. I mean, he could literally, as long as he gets a hold of you, he, he really pretty much can do what he wants. And I think that's going to be where it's going to cause Islam a ton of problems. And again, if that's the way that he goes in, if he's looking for these takedowns, if he's looking to really kind of stick his neck out there and shoot for these takedowns or go for a single, and th it, it gives opportunities for a guy who is going to be fine anywhere. I mean, we've seen him against multiple fighters in, uh, in Charles Oliveira. We've seen him pull guard, you know, because he can't get these guys down or, or these guys don't want to be there. So he's, he's looking for any way, even Poirier. Poirier defended some takedowns from him. But as soon as he got an opportunity... Um, to get the top position, he got it. As soon as he's looking to just say, hey, you're going to stand, I'm going to jump on your back and finish you that way. There's multiple ways that he can do that, where the smooth transitions from, from Charles are incredible. Uh, anywhere this fight goes, always hunting for submissions, that's another issue for Islam, where if he's looking to be positional, the way that Charles really has been successful in finding ways to get the finish or, or gaining control in, in a grappling exchange is just submission hunt. Look for submissions, force them out of, uh, you know, to be uncomfortable, to not be in a, uh, uh, to, to force to defend these submissions. And then he's able to either transition, find a better spot, find a more dominant spot. And can Islam keep him down? Even if he was to get Charles down, does he want to stay there? How long do you really want to stay there in the guard of Charles Oliveira, which is just, again, it's proven to be a very bad spot. So I think it takes away the favorite position of Islam Makashev. I mean, Makashev is gonna want to be in top control. And yes, he's strong. And everyone's kind of talked about that, how strong he is, how, you know, he's got the, the, a really tight squeeze. And, and I am positive that, he's, that he has that, um, that Islam has that. But when you're talking about the slick transitions and slick movements, that's gonna be Charles Oliveira. So it's gonna be very difficult for him to kind of have, you know, that positional spot over and over and over again without either trying to get a finish on Charles or without getting finished himself. So it's a dangerous spot where it used to be a comfort zone for Islam. It's a dangerous spot for him there. And then if you also look at the striking, I mean, I I think we're all pretty much in agreement here that the striking is going to be massively uh, better for Charles Oliveira than Islam Makashev. He has, you know, I love the front kick that, that uh, Oliveira does. He kind of has that front body kick where he lands. He's quick with his leg kicks. He's got quick combinations. We've seen it. We, we've seen him have that where pretty much we don't see Islam mixing up combinations. We don't see him, you know, having these elite level crisp combinations. Pretty much it's, you know, I think he's getting better. I definitely think he's elevating, but he pretty much as, you know, we've talked about the show and other kind of grapplers is it's distance. You know, he's here to cut distance. It's, you know, he's throwing these strikes 
in front of level changes to just kind of open up opportunities for these takedowns for control time. And if he's going to be standing and looking for that, that's not going to be the greatest spot for you. I mean, it's also not going to be a favorable spot when if, you know, Makashev says, hey, yeah, I'm a little uncomfortable being on the ground because, you know, the, the threat, I'm sure he's going to be going for takedowns. But even if he's a little iffy, then you're going to be standing with a guy who probably has way better striking than you, more versatile striking, better combinations. With the limited striking that Islam has, that's that's a big problem for him. Where standing or on the ground, I would give the advantage to Oliveira in those spots there. And Charles can really move forward. I think that's something that is really misconception here is that where, you know, hey, is, is you know, Islam going to get the big, you know, going to get the top control, going to get the takedown? I don't think Oliveira cares at all. I think that's also why he has such success with his striking is because he can freely move forward. As these guys are defending, you know, even with Justin Gaethje, he's worried about the takedown. There's absolutely no question he's worried about the takedown. And he could, Oliver can freely move forward, throw big shots, throw jumping kicks, throw things with big movements, and not care because if there's a takedown, he's fine with it, which nobody, not many guys are looking to take him down. But if not, he's got some crisp striking, so they're worried about the takedowns, they're worried about the strikes, opens up opportunities for him. So I think that's a very big issue for Islam as well. And the last part here is Charles has power. I mean, this is something we have not talked about, and I think a lot of people aren't talking about, is he's got power. I mean, maybe you're saying, hey, he landed a nice shot on Charles, or on Charles, on Chandler, um, you know, but it, it, it's not just that he landed some lucky shot. I mean, some of these combinations are really, really set up perfectly, are crisp, are really well-timed and precise, where it's just something different from a guy who has such elite level grappling to really put together these strikes and these combinations. You know, knocking down, uh, you know, rocking Gagey a few times in one round is kind of unheard of. Um, and then he ended up getting the finish in the first round. Same thing with Chandler. Chandler, you know, he's in there brawling with them, lands a big shot, changes the fight, fight over. Those are some big things there. So for me here, listen, I, I, I like Oliveira here. I think Charles Oliveira goes out there, gets this victory. I think there's multiple packs for him here. I can go out there and I think he could really be a little iffy in that first round. Maybe kind of worry about, you know, kind of see what Islam is going to present to him. But I think everything is pointing to me, to be honest with you, is pointing to the dog here. Is pointing to the current champion, uh, Charles Oliveira. So I, I like the price here. I think it's a great price. So I like Charles Oliveira plus 160 to get the job done against Islam Makashev. So that is my free play on the main event. And then the other one we're going to quickly go over here is the Kita Krylov versus Vulcan. Ozdemir, we've got Krylov roughly around minus 170, and we've got Ozdemir plus 145. Now, the biggest part here, and I'm going to quickly, like I said, go over this one quickly, is um, is Vulcan Ozdemir, pressure fighter, who's looking for the big shot, right? We know he's looking for those big shots. We know he's looking for the power. We know he's going to be looking to kind of land those big shots, set it up with those big shots. He's got some... Some nice, uh, some nice kicking arsenal there. He throws a nice front, uh, a nice body kick he can. Some leg kicks he'll throw in there to open up the big shots. But the issue here, I think, for me is that you know Ozmir does have power per se, but I think it's a little overstated. You know, some of these guys that he was knocking out years ago. I mean, uh, Misha Serkinov is one of them. Um, Jimmy Manawa is one of them. I mean, these are the route mu route. Mount Rushmore of glass chins. I mean, no doubt it is the Mount Rushmore of glass chins. I mean, and then you've also got, he knocked out Elir Latifi. I mean, these aren't these high profile guys that are can take big shots. These are kind of the glass chins. I mean, he has power, but I don't think it sets up well against Krylov. We've got Krylov who does have good footwork, who is a kind of guy who's going to keep distance, work from the outside, keep distance, work from the outside. He has a good job. He sets it up pretty nicely. And he's not a kind of guy, for the most part, to get pulled into brawls. He's not just going to be brawling for no reason. He's not going to just go in there and just start firing big shots, especially in a position of, in a fight of this style where he's not the big power puncher and he's facing the power puncher. And I think that's where he starts to chop away at some of the legs early on Vulcan, uh, Vulcan looking to kind of lower the power, drain some of that power that he's gonna need to use to generate with his legs. And I think that's where he can start to pick up, uh, pick up some rounds. And you mix in the better uh, footwork with the better combinations. I don't really think that Vulcan over uh, you know, three rounds can go out there 
and win a decision. I, I think it's more where you're going to see it be Vulcan kind of has the KO or bust spot here. I don't think this is a technical fight for him to win over three rounds. Unless he sparks him, you know, a couple different spots or wobble, wobbles him, rocks uh, Krylov, he could win those rounds. But I don't think fighting over three rounds in this style works for him because also the fact that I think the pressure from Ozdemir uh, could put him in, in, in a position where Krylov needs to get takedowns. I mean, I think he has to add takedowns at certain points to, you know, kind of keep Vulcan off of his game, to keep Vulcan, you know, not sure of where the, you know, and again, we we're kind of talking about that with, with um, Charles Oliveira, where that just the threat of takedowns is going to change the, the fighter. So I think, Vol uh, I think, um, Krylov, if he could throw a couple of those in there and just keep it as a change of pace, he's not going to grapple him to death. He's not going to keep him down for the whole time. At least he shouldn't. If he does, that's great. But if he shouldn't, um, it's going to slow down some of the cardio of Ozdemir. I think it's going to get him thinking about other things, drain his power, drain his cardio. So, um, so for me here, I think that uh, Krylov, he stays at range. He works either all the way in or all the way out. I don't think he wants to stay just in boxing range with Vulcan. So I either think he's all the way in, getting the takedowns, staying tight, maybe clinching, utilizing some of his weapons there, or all the way out, staying at kicking range and not being pulled into a brawl. So that's where I think this fight has some legs. It gets further into it here. So I do like Nikita Krylov here at minus 170. I think the price is good. I think he's got multiple ways to kind of pull this fight out. And I also do like, as a sprinkle, I do like Krylov via points plus 280. I think it's a great price. I don't think he's going to put away uh, Ozdemir. I think he's going to be very leery of the big power, of the big shots. Know that he has to stay at range or look for those takedowns. So I think he ends up getting his victory via decision. So those are my plays. Krylov minus 170 as well as a sprinkle on Krylov via points plus 280. So those are my plays for UFC 280. Uh, this Saturday, excited about it. It's an earlier card. It's in Dubai, so it's going to be an earlier card there. Um, there you have it. If you want to become a client, link in the description. This is Kyle Anthony's UFC betting show, and I'll see you next time.